So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I am so excited that you all are joining us tonight um, for our business career fair panel. Um, my name is Ms. Conti, if you don't know me yet. Um, I will be monitoring the chat. So if you have a question, feel free to chat, um, send something to me in the chat, and I will work that in. Um, and then otherwise, our student facilitator for today is Sajel. And so she is going to introduce you to our speakers and get us started. Hi, um, I'm Sajal. I'm a senior. Um, I just wanted to first thank all the speakers for joining us today. Um, and then with that, I'm going to ask you all for your introduction. So if Mr. Curry can go first, can you please give us a, a brief introduction about you? Yeah, yeah, cool. And, and everybody, feel free to call me Kevin. Um, but yeah, so I was class of 03, along with, with Matt, but I won't step on his intro. Um, so yeah, so coming up on, what, 18 years now, <laughs> um, which is crazy, yeah. So uh, class of 03, I am currently the head of sustainability analytics at Amazon. Uh, you may have heard of, of Amazon, but maybe not the sustainability team. So I'm looking forward to getting it into uh, that with all of you. Um, and so basically what, what my team does, um, we, we they provide all of the kind of um, analytics, the, the metrics and the dashboards and the um, some of the forecasts and stuff for our sustainability program. So one of the big pieces of that would be um, if you've heard of Amazon's Climate Pledge, my team is the one that kind of um, sets, you know, uh, we're the ones who measure the carbon um, that Amazon emits on a, on a yearly basis. And we give that, those numbers to the business teams and kind of advise them on what they can do to reduce that and over time and with the goal being getting to net zero by 2040. So um, that's what I do in a nutshell. And, and at home, I've got three little kids, um, the oldest in first grade right now. Um, so it would crazy that Mrs. Corrigan, he'll be in, he'll be in sixth grade not, uh, not too long from now. And then uh, like, I, I remember a lot about your class. So, the, you know, he'll be having those memories. So it's, it's just yeah. crazy to be back. It's really cool. Um, and looking forward to chatting with you all. Thank you so much. Um, if Mr. Van Busker can go next. Of course, and uh, likewise, please call me Matt. Uh, so I was, as Kevin mentioned, I was in the same graduating class as him. I went to CA from first grade through uh, 12th grade. I'm currently a co-founder and CEO of a venture-backed startup called Hummingbird RegTech, a uh, fairly small company. We've only had 15 people so far, but we've raised about, I think, $13 million to date. Uh, we're deploying some advanced data scientist capabilities to help combat financial crimes internationally and work with companies ranging from Fannie Mae, Stripe, and Etsy uh, down to sort of baby startups. We, uh, I came out from college and went to work for the Treasury Department as a regulator and then uh, through various moves ended up uh, building the regulatory function at a cryptocurrency startup called Circle and had to build some of the sort of original techniques for combating uh, bad actors on the using Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on the dark web uh, to do bad things. And that led to the inspiration for uh, launching Hummingbird. So looking forward to speaking with everyone. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Aaron, if you can go next. Yes, happy to. Um, so Aaron Marbley, I graduated in 2008. I'm currently at Google in New York, specifically working for um, Google Fiber, which is Google's telecoms unit um, and provider of high-speed internet service. Um, I, my, my title is business development manager, but my team is really responsible for um, Google Fiber's expansion, and that's in two ways. So geographic expansion in terms of um, expanding the footprint for which um, Google offers service and uh, the product and the slash kind of customer engagement expansion moving from uh, being solely a residential service to now um, serving uh, enterprise customers as well. I've been there for about a year and spent um, most of uh, my, my career to date in investment banking. So can speak to the, uh, the transition between finance and tech. Both have been great experiences, uh, but really excited to be here and excited to speak to everyone. Awesome, thank you so much. So my first question for all of you is, where did you go for your post-academy degrees? And did you feel that academy did a good job preparing you for academic success? 
You can go in the same order that you did your introductions or however you feel comfortable. Cool. Yeah, then I'll start this one and then I'll let somebody else take the, the first stab at the next one. Um, but yeah, so I went to Vanderbilt down in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and then following that, actually like Aaron, uh, went into uh, investment banking for a couple of years, uh, went back to school and got a master's in economics at University of Virginia. Um, so I've been in kind of quantitative fields the whole time. And Academy set me up in a number of ways. I'll give you two of them. Um, one is, I believe I was actually in the very first computer science class that Academy offered, which again, kind of dates, uh, dates me <laughs> to, to when, I, when I went to Academy um, with Mr. Daubenmeier, which I, I think he's still at the school. Um, no. Oh, he's not. Okay, no. okay. So yeah, I went, I went uh, so this was, you know, we, I started it probably junior year of high school. Um, and I remember I hated that class the very first day. I thought it was the most confusing, like you're learning this new language on the computer and it made no sense to me. Um, I eventually turned, like Mr. Dobbenmeyer turned me into just loving it and I majored in computer science as my undergrad uh, degree. So it went through the complete 180, thanks to Mr. Dobbenmeyer and just the general um, staff around the academy. Um, the other way that it really set me up and we might get into this more over time, is my, my career is kind of like taking a winding path and I've tried a bunch of different things. I've taken a bunch of time off. I even took a year off to travel and freelance write and things like that. Um, so just kind of tried to see the world from a number of different perspectives. And Academy kind of gave me that background in that like I was able to, you know, try out for and, and make all the sports teams despite when I tried out, I wasn't all that good. And over time I became good. And like, um, you know, by, by the end of high school, I was contributing to like state qualifying teams. Um, but when I, when I started in seventh grade, I was terrible, like particularly at golf um, was, was the big one that stuck out. Um, but it also gave me a lot of different science experience, a lot of different um, arts. I took a ton of Mr. Block's classes and Miss, Mrs. Wilson's classes. Um, so it was that kind of that why, like the well-roundedness that prepared me and kind of set me up for the career that I've been on uh, to date. I uh, went to a small liberal arts school called Colorado College, uh, coming out from CA, went from CA to CC. And uh, similar to Kevin, I think the well-roundedness is one of the main takeaways I had from my time at the Academy. Uh, exposure to a very wide variety of subjects and particularly having teachers who brought us into thinking kind of below just surface level exposure to these topics and really trying to think about the uh, impact and make connections across subjects. Uh, the college I went to, I thought, um, continued that pretty well in that uh, they have an unusual class schedule and that you only take one course at a time for three and a half weeks. So it's basically a semester's credit in less than a month. So you're immersed in that for three to six hours a day, basically, and it lets you really get really deeply into things. Um, I think one of the kind of keys to my career so far has really been finding connections between things. And uh, when I, uh, Kevin and I, well, I guess all of us kind of graduated at a rough time, but Kevin and I, particularly at the beginning of the financial crisis, <laughs> uh, it was a fun time to be coming out of school. And at the time, I really wanted to work for uh, Microsoft in their Xbox division. Uh, but very few companies are actually uh, hiring apart from particularly, I think the financial industry and financial regulators were scrambling. So I ended, that's how I ended up at the treasury department. And uh, I knew I wanted to get back into tech. So I had to figure out how to uh, parlay a background in regulation into a tech job. And the eventual solution was just to found a technology company. <laughs> Um, but the sort of insights that led to the various career moves that I've made, I think were really grounded in the time at CA and, uh, making connections across fields that don't often seem like they are connected with each other or should be connected with each other and figure out how to speak, uh, to two different, very different, two very different audiences in a way that each will understand. Um, so yeah, stop there. Yeah, and I'll uh, finish this off here. I went to uh, Penn undergrad um, right after Academy in 08 and graduated in 2012. And then four years later, I um, actually went to Columbia to get my MBA. So most of my academic experience was very focused on um, on business, you know, in, both from undergrad and, and, and graduate school. 
Um, I thought in terms of getting to undergrad academy really did prepare me. Everything from, and, and not to embarrass her, she's on the call, Mrs. Hogan reading my college essays and, 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 uh, and revising them and spending time with me on them. Uh, that would have just been more difficult at, at other places, and, and you can't guarantee that someone's going to be there and to spend that much time with you outside of uh, her, her existing responsibility. So it was everything from that to all the tools Academy offered in terms of uh, preparing for college, becoming aware of places that you may not have seen, kind of deciding what to look for in, in, in various schools, um, having all the resources available. Uh, you know, and, and the one, if there's any bit of advice I would have, um, it's just to utilize all those things because they're all available and it can make the process so much easier. It demystifies so many things about the process. And I think that now it's much harder than it's probably ever been and certainly harder than it was when I was um, a, a senior. But, um, you know, everything was available to me. And and that's that's something that we were we were very fortunate to have. And I mean, beyond that, just just having my closest friends uh, even still that I went to school with it just it, it there's there's a lot to be said for the balance of work and personal life and um academy has certainly been beneficial for the personal side of it because of the relationships I have and and, and still have uh today one one thing I'll add on um given the, is Bishop Cummins Matt made around kind of he and I came out of college right at the start of the great recession um and so like you know the the kind of the the better you set yourself up you know academy does a great job and then going off into college and and you know taking that one step further the better you set yourself up the more resilient you're going to be to shocks like that so like right now we obviously this is one of the, the craziest times to be alive um you know we, we've gone through a lot of different things like this and so just kind of keep keep plugging away um and keep building your skill sets um and matt and i made it through the financial sector you know during the recession um it was the month that I started on the job when basically all of the, I, I started in leverage finance and it was the month that I started on the job, all of the lending markets dried up and like, we didn't have anything to go pitch and like all the stuff that I wanted to go do um, in that job was basically not there anymore. So you kind of had to be flexible and adapt and kind of, um, you know, re replan and, and improvise. I'm also add that the, Junior speech has been one of the most valuable experiences in my life. I think I uh, have particularly since getting into this whole startup realm, but I was just tallying up. I think I've spoken a, a probably north of 50 times in the past three years um, from audiences ranging from very small to uh, the worst speech experience in my life, actually, which I thought the junior speech would be the most stressful, but uh, uh, speaking to a fest. Uh, fintech festival in singapore with an audience over uh, 2500 non-native english speakers and uh remembering the coaching from junior speech that you should open with a joke to get the audience to loosen up and then having that joke fall completely flat since none of them spoke english natively uh, that was a fun time but uh that that uh it teaches you <laughs> some very valuable skills and i think the ability to get up in front of an audience and convey your ideas is also one of the biggest sort of valuable takeaways I had from uh, my time there. Thank you so much for your guys' insight. So for the next question, we already talked about it a little bit, but what did you major in and how much did your major impact your post-college career choices? I can get started on this one. Um, in undergrad, I was a finance major, um, had a pretty big impact on, on what I did right out of school. So I think that that first step beyond uh, beyond college, it does make, it can make a difference depending on how you'd like to use that major and, and, and um, sort of what support around, you know, using that major to get to a certain field, to get into a certain job is, is, is how linear that path may be. Um, and additionally, when I was in graduate school, also continued, continued to study finance and went into finance immediately following um, that experience. But I will say, for what I do now, I use so much less of what I majored in in both college and business school. And so I, I need to utilize a bit of a wider skill set. And so I think that the important thing here is not to get too bogged down in just your major. Take things that are interesting to you as well, um, because I think that that comes up a lot more often as you start to get further in your career. And as you start to get more experience, what you majored in begins to, to matter progressively less. So instead of um, people looking to see what you majored in college, they'll see what experience you had. And that becomes 
uh, of greater importance. But the, the, there are certain things that you'll remember from the experience that are outside of your major because you took it because you may have just had a passing interest in something or uh, you may have just always wanted to learn about something, be it something in, in a STEM field or something in the humanities. Um, but it, it, it had an impact early on. But I think over time, uh, experience is the biggest, has the biggest impact. <clears throat> I think, uh, so I, I majored in economics coming out from CA and obviously going from an econ major to the treasury department's a pretty straightforward uh, move there. Um, I think uh, one thing I've seen, um, so I went, having gone to a liberal arts school and then having gone into positions where I was hiring people off from various types of schools, I think uh, getting hard a very sort of specific degree focused on uh, finance economics or something like that, that can lead directly to job opportunities can make it easier to get your first job right out of school, particularly if you're going to a university that then has a sort of direct feed into the types of companies you want to work for. Um, so going to liberal arts schools can be a little harder right off the bat. They may not have the same network, but I do see when you're maybe five years into your career, uh, the types of skills that the, I think the academy is sort of a liberal arts type of place as well. Uh, the skills that you develop there can start to help you advance further and faster uh, once you get your foot in the door. Um, and once again, it's the sort of breadth of exposure and um, ability to be insightful um, that can help you move forward, I think. And uh, so, I guess that's some sort of main takeaway. I definitely encourage people to <laughs> major in something that they would like to work in. Uh, it does uh, help a lot, but that doesn't mean if you go uh, into a field that is really your a major field of interest, it's still not going to be a major detriment to your career in the long term. It just uh, you'll need maybe a little more to put a little more uh, sweat effort when you're doing your initial job hunt to get your foot in the door and then. From then on, you'll be able to uh, see the acceleration that you'd want. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll um, build on, on that. Um, so my major was in undergrad, excuse me, was computer science and math. And then I mentioned I got a master's in economics a few years later. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do post-college. And the only reason I got into investment banking is because this guy that I was on the bowling team with said, hey, I think you might like it. And I was like, all right, I'll apply it because I didn't know what else to do. Um, so I've kind of seen that at a bunch of the stages in my career where like, I don't really know what's next, but I do know that like, I have this foundation. So can, whether it's computer science, math, economics, like is this foundation that's kind of ap applicable to anything? And like what Aaron said, you know, the further you get from college, the less you use the direct um, things that you learned in, in your time there. And the more that you 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 know kind of use your experience, your work experience, um, and so at every step along my journey, um, I, I I knew I wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, so banking wasn't what I wanted to do long term. Um, and then from there, when I went back to school, or I, after banking, I traveled for a year and trying to like just kind of open my eyes to what else there is. Like I didn't really know what to do. Um, then so that's when I went back to to school. Um, and then after school, I was still kind of like. I don't know what to do now either. Um, well, after my after my grad program, um, but all along the way, I had this background in quantitative skills, which are in high demand, and I knew how to code in SQL, for example, which is which is a big part of the, the work that I do now. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'm getting, you know, maybe I'm getting closer and closer to where I'm trying to go. Um, so I, I got a job at Capital One, and that was kind of like a conscience bridge, like. I didn't really want to be a Capital One, but it was a, a bridge from investment banking to tech. Um, and so it was like, okay, from here, you know, I can go see what's going on. I did that for three years. And, um, and that got me into Amazon, where I, in the, the payments part of Amazon, which again, like, so there was this, this tie. It was, it was from credit cards at Capital One to credit cards at Amazon. But Amazon got me into this world where like, I can go do anything, you know, like Amazon, you can, you can build, you know, work on the, the networks that power our logistics network, or you can go build like drones, or you can 
Um, in my case, sustainability. So like a year into my time here, I realized, oh, Amazon's got the sustainability team. That's something I'm really passionate about. Like, can I marry this quantitative background with what I really want to go, like what I, what I, um, you know, what, what my goals are in life and like, you know, making the world a better place for the ki my kids and things like that. Um, and so Amazon sustainability team kind of fit that, you know, fit both sides of it. that and so I'm senior like okay I feel like I'm, I'm on a good spot um, but again it just comes back to um, just building that kind of foundation of broadly speaking in my case analytics um, and going from that. Thank you there's a lot of really good advice in there I really appreciate it um, so the next one we also kind of discussed a little bit but it's a little bit different um, how did you get into your current role and how did academy help you get there? I can go first on that one. Uh, it's pretty straightforward answer for me. I just started the company. <laughs> um, the slightly more complex story there is I had been running this compliance and government affairs team at this startup as it was growing very rapidly. It was about the 20th hire and they had over 300 people by the time I left. Uh, so I had to take my team from being just me to operating in with uh, offices in London, Dublin, Shanghai, and a couple other locations. Uh, and I had to piece together a bunch of internal technology in order to address the pain points that my team was facing. And I ended up basically uh, abducting engineers from our product team. So uh, they would otherwise be building stuff that could actually help the company make money, but I would steal them for compliance tasks. So uh, after doing that enough, they put together a internal risk team of engineers and uh, data scientists that we could leverage and were able to do some really powerful things. But there was still a whole set of stuff that uh, it made no sense for us to try to create internally, but there were still material pain points for anyone who's in a risk job in the financial industry. And sort of led to the question of, uh, well, what would happen if we just created a team of engineers from places like Google and Amazon and Apple and such, and threw them at these types of challenges directly. So uh, over the course of uh, close to a year, probably, uh, of sort of laying the groundwork, having dozens of conversations with people, um, got up to the point where I said, yeah, I, I kind of need to see if this is going to work. And I think it's from the academy perspective, um, some of those conversations were people that I met at uh, CA, or I was sort of reaching out to them to run bounce ideas off of them, see what they thought, help me refine it. Um, and I think the, the broader sort of alumni network is a very, very cool thing to be able to access. So going to the LinkedIn groups and uh, seeing who you can find who might have a perspective on a particular question or may have gone down that path before and just having that sort of common ground with them saying, hey, you went to the same school, do you mind uh, chatting with me for 15 or 20 minutes so I can ask a quick question? Um, for the most part, everyone is was open to that and uh, would make time. So definitely encourage everyone on the call here to consider doing that too. Uh, even at the stage that you're in, well, if you're contemplating longer term career uh, paths and want to some advice about what people found valuable in their time in going to college. Uh, so just feel free to reach out. Yeah, you know, um, just to uh, kind of re both reiterate and, and speak to my own experience, uh, a lot of what Matt said is absolutely true. Um, so when I was in investment banking for, for some time, I, I realized that the uh, the idea of doing that any longer was pretty terrifying. And so I knew I wanted to do something else, something outside of finance and something that was, um, if I could, uh, pivoted more towards tech or something that was more consumer facing. And so I reached out to a number of, 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 of different uh, different folks in my network from, from high school, from college, from, from graduate school, uh, just to get a sense of if they had made a transition, how did they make that transition? If, if they had gone through a recruiting process, how did they master that process? And, and, and really... Um, my experience became a product of so much of that advice that I had gotten from folks that 
um, that offered the, the the career advice. And um, directly, the position that that I ended up um, landing at Google was a product of a referral from someone who was uh, a college classmate of mine. So, you know, very similar. I, I'm I'm very much a product of having help from others and. Um, you know, to reiterate what Matt said there, if there is any advice, it is to rely on the people that you that, that know you well, that you know very well, whose opinion you trust and, 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 and value, because that ultimately becomes so much of uh, when you're making any important decision, particularly career decisions. Um, it really does help to, to, to have people there who can who can listen, who can offer advice. Uh, who will serve as, as a somewhat objective third party in, in trying to help you make some make sense of some of these tough decisions. Um, and it's especially, you know, meaningful when those people have known you for as long as as you all will will know each other. And, and you may not see it now, but, um, you know, years from now, certainly that, that'll that'll be a part of how you make some of those decisions. So uh, it continues to to, um, to to benefit me even beyond even at a time like this when I'm not looking for a new job still once I did having people in the network being able to talk to folks who are also in um, in a similar business and and just kind of get ideas from them uh, just continues to be a, a pretty rewarding uh, piece of all this yeah and I 100% agree with uh, with everything Matt and Aaron said um, the, the, I'll, I'll add a different flavor of kind of I, I kind of gave my, my story about how I got here but I'll add a, a different perspective on like what Academy did to, to set me up. Um, and, and I think, uh, and that is like, it really it taught me how to fail and how to not let that get you down for the long term. Like some of my biggest memories from Academy are like um, when, you know, uh, senior year of tennis, I was like borderline varsity, um, but didn't get to go on the team that went to the state championship. Um, and Coach Worsler, who I know is still around doing his thing, like he helped me through that time where I was like super disappointed. And it, just, it felt like at the time it was kind of the end of the world, um, but it, it wasn't. And like, and there's countless examples of this. There's the tests I failed and like um, Mr. Davis, who I don't think he's still around, but like Mr. Davis's biology class in ninth grade. And like these things like stand out and he sat me down afterwards because I was a really good student. Um, and so like failing a test was was not kind of, uh, it was a surprise. So he sat me down afterwards. He was like, hey, what happened with this? And I was like, well, I was at a concert the night before and um, I didn't get as much sight in as I want to. Um, and he was like, all right, well, like, how can you, you know, like, let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, and so all of those things um, really prepared me for the business. Um, and I'll relay one more, one more failure. of When I was at Capital One, I had a big launch where I was kind of driving this new algorithm that we were implementing for our customers. And we launched this, this, this algorithm and the next day, like millions of, of or it was, uh, I think it was like hundreds of thousands of customers got declined on their credit card because of an error in the way that we implemented it, which came back on me. Like, and, and, that, was, uh, and that was really bad, but like we caught it. I was able to like own up to like, this is the part of the process that I didn't see through in the right way like I didn't I didn't have the right check in this area um, and we worked it out you know we, we, we rolled back the algorithm fixed the fixed all the issues and and implemented it like you know a week or two later um, with with tighter guardrails on it um, but that was like that was a terrifying experience to have to go to your boss and be like yeah I really screwed up and it's impacting you know hundreds of thousands of people around the country um, and and you know but then I bounced back from that and like um, you know, got promoted, you know, within the next year or so, like, you know, all these things happen in Academy really helped me um, kind of get that, that resilient mindset um, you know, that I've been able to apply in my work. Thank you, guys. Uh, Kevin, I really felt you on that Davis bio thing. The same thing happened to me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So he is still around. <laughs> Jeff, good to hear. Um, so the next question is something fun. What is something that would surprise people about the work that you do? I guess I'll, I'll start this one. Um, I think, uh, so being on Amazon Sustainability, um, or before I joined the team, the, the um, caveat that a lot of people gave me, they're like, are you sure you want to go to Amazon Sustainability? Like, they don't really do much. Like, they're more of kind of like this 
figurehead group. Um, and, and so like actually joining the team and seeing how much stuff we have going on and like how passionate I work with hundreds of people on this team. Um, every single one of them is in it for the same reason that I am, which is like to improve the, the future of the planet. Um, and, and so like, while, you know, uh, Amazon gets a lot of good and bad press, I, you know, I'm guessing most people here use Amazon, but like, there's a lot of press out there that's, that's negative and particularly when it comes to sustainability. Um, and so it's, it's cool to see on the inside, uh, people really fighting for, um, what's right and trying to push that through while maintaining the fact that Amazon is a business that wants to make money and, you know, do all that. So like, um, we've got a lot of people pushing in, in, um, you know, for, for, you know, good causes. And, and the thing that I guess that, um, related, but more surprising about like myself is like, I don't, or maybe you've gotten this by now, but like, I don't, I didn't really want to ever be in business. Um, and now I've got a career in, in business. Um, like I never thought, uh, that, th that I would be long-term in, in business. And now I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be at Amazon sustainability for a while. Um, and, and it's because like, there are pockets of business. Um, and I found one here at Amazon where like, I don't worry about the bottom line as much. Like I can go um, implement my ideas and not worry about the cost. Like Amazon's got money and they don't have to, you know, um, it's not my responsibility to think about that kind of thing. Um, I also found one at Capital One where like we were launching an app called CreditWise and um, our mission was go make this happen. We're not going to make any money off of it, but don't worry about it. Like go out there, and try to make sure that people can get this app um, that need help with their credit score to help, you know, help them improve their ability to purchase things and finance things. Um, so there, there are pockets of, of business everywhere for those that are kind of like on the fence of whether you want to go into this path. Um, there are pockets everywhere that like will surprise you and like the, the motives aren't always how they might be portrayed in, in the news. Um, and so that's, that's been really encouraging for me. Okay, continuing with that, it's uh, it's a little tongue in cheek, but um, I'd say the so, some jobs may seem super boring on the surface, like compliance can actually have some. I mean, in many cases, they really are as boring as they seem. Uh, but if you kind of cut, like when you in the whole so regulatory space, it's only boring because of the way it has been implemented over the past forty or fifty years. But all the laws that we're talking about were implemented for a reason. Um, in the financial space, kind of the two broad areas are preventing financial crimes and then uh, protecting people from abusive financial products or bad actors. And uh, the way that the whole, all the work is done historically is kind of people moving paper around and uh, being very ticky tacky and uh, comments on how things that they find. And they're often for uh, people who are in roles like Kevin's and Aaron's, they often look at the compliance team and uh, sort of would say that they're the people who say no to everything interesting we want to do. <laughs> um, but I think that the, if you dive into it and sort of take a, um, a an eye to reworking it from the ground up saying, what, what actually matters here? Like, why are we doing this? And then if we threw everything out the window in terms of how we do it today and reinvented it from scratch, what might it look like? Could we get rid of all of the, the tedious aspects of it and really let people focus on the more interesting side of it? Uh, if the advent, I guess one bit of advice, um, everyone needs machine learning engineers now and, uh, if you come out of school with an a expertise in machine learning, you're going to get a job pretty quickly. I think that's probably still going to hold true um, by the time you guys will be coming out of school. Um, and one of the areas that's really being shaken up now, I think, is all this sort of back office, behind the scenes business stuff. So as uh, Kevin is helping on the sustainability front, but there are a bunch of other areas of uh, business that are historically basically run by a whole bunch of ad hoc spreadsheets. And there's a huge amount of entrepreneurial opportunity to sort of shake things up and reinvent the way the back office functions work, let alone the stuff we all kind of see in the headlines. Um, 
So I guess that would be uh, one bit of advice there would be don't, uh, there's nothing wrong with getting, developing expertise in an area that doesn't seem all that interesting on the surface, because maybe if you can merge it together with some other skill that you have, you can turn it into something that's a really unique differentiator for you. Yeah, I'll add to, uh, to answer the, 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 the question, which is, uh, which is a good question. Uh, one thing I think that surprises folks uh, when I talk about the, the work I do is, you know, just in terms of the corporate structure, Alphabet, which is the, the Google parent company, has about 100,000 employees. And um, within my section, which is among, there's, there's sort of the big Google, which is what you would think of. You, you have search and advertising, uh, Google Cloud, Android um, operating system. And then you have a collection of, of smaller bets within the, the overall corporate structure. And so I'm on the side of the smaller bets. So it often feels like I work in a startup. Culturally, it feels like a startup in terms of where it is in its life cycle. If you think of a business that's um, from the time it's, it's born, so to speak, to the time it, 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 it ages and matures into being uh, a sort of steady state business that the, the large Google organization is, mine is very small and it's in its, 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 its very early stages of development. So that's a, a really exciting opportunity because within this massive organization, you have a, um, a business that feels very small, feels like the underdog, it feels very, you know, sort of um, scrappy in terms of our collective desire to, to continue to expand aggressively and, and to get more customers and um, to expand our offerings. And so it's a really interesting dynamic because you're stacking up. Um, I guess I do have colleagues that work in other areas that are a lot more developed and uh, frankly, make the company make it possible for the company to invest in areas like mine. Um, but it, it it all feels very separate. And and as I said, culturally for us, it's it's very small, and 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 everyone um, is sort of mission driven in that way versus kind of uh, getting there and 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 sort of having a um, a steady workforce that that doesn't fluctuate much and 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 has its its roles very clearly defined. So thinking about those two under that same umbrella. Uh, is, is, is always interesting, and, and, and I think that um, it's just one thing that people wouldn't expect when you see just how large the, the company itself is. Thanks, guys. Um, so the next question is, what are the biggest challenges you are facing or have faced in your current work role, and what are some of the struggles you anticipate in the next year, five years, or 25 years? <laughs> No. Go ahead, there. Sure. Um, so obviously, yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to jump the gun here. If we're going to discuss it later, but 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 starting um, around the time the pandemic started has been a significant challenge because there's there was already a, a, a pretty small window in terms of getting acclimated on the team, meeting folks that I that I'm going to be working with, uh, being able to uh, travel to different markets that we're either already in or looking to expand into. And not having those opportunities to do that diligence on site and, 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 and to go uh, to various cities and meet with key stakeholders that would be a part of bringing um, the service there. Because these are, you know, big, very capital intensive projects that we would be asking the city to, to a city to take part in um, has been has been difficult. There's only so much you can truly get out of in certain areas. There's only so much you can get out of um, doing it virtually. I mean, there, there are many areas that, that require. Uh, folks to be together at a site or um, together with a customer uh, and, the, and you just can't replace that. And so there was the difficulty from the job itself and then also the difficulty in terms of um, meeting the team, getting to know folks and then, and then trying to do all of that while there's a pandemic happening. I think it's a challenge for everyone and it's going to continue to be one as we gain more clarity about what the future of work looks like. Uh, but it's definitely been a challenge so far to, uh, to, to, to overcome. Yeah, uh, from my end, every story you hear about how hard it is to found a startup is completely true. Uh, it is you basically if you can't handle bad things happening and setbacks and such, then it's just not going to work. Um, we had been taking a strategy where. Uh, so the company was founded in late 2016 and we kept it very lean for a long time because 
the concept of minimum viable product doesn't really exist in our space. Like you have to have a fairly robust set of features in order to get any financial institution or government agency to consider you. Um, so we ran lean for a long time and 2019 was the first time that we really started getting the product in market uh, with te for testing. Uh, Fannie Mae was actually our first paying customer, which kind of blew my mind when I, I would not have guessed that from our, uh, from the, day that I quit my last job to start it. I assume it would be some tiny startup that would use this first. Um, but we were starting to get market traction, but not enough to have a super compelling A round. So we intentionally stretched our capital and ran the bank account down pretty close to empty uh, so that we could come to the table with a better story to tell uh, to the investors out there. And the timing of that ended up working out that the we needed to raise our Series A in uh, March to April of this year, <laughs> uh, which obviously was very interesting timing. Um, a whole bunch of investors that we had thought were very in interested in us, including some kind of big name ones, ended up having companies on their books that uh, were just blowing up. Like one of our one of them had to furlough half their employees because they provided a lot of support. They had a business that relied on the restaurant industry as an example. Um, we ended up being in a weirdly good position though in that uh, one of our investors is an impact investor that's focused on global financial inclusion as their primary goal. And uh, they're coming, they're a spinoff from the fund that was created by the uh, founder of eBay. And they, I, uh, convinced my co-founders to let them in to our last round. My co-founders are all coming from a tech background and didn't quite understand the uh, benefit at the time to having an investor that was not super networked in Silicon Valley and couldn't give us access to top recruiting talent and all of that. But they really believed in our mission and they preempted our round this, uh, this time, which means that they came to us before we were actively seeking money and said, we want to give you a term sheet and uh, have you uh, lead the round for you. So we came into the pandemic with terms already defined by an investor that has a pretty good track record and a very strong reputation internationally. And all of our existing investors uh, really believed in us and came back in and um, they're given pro rata rights at each round. So they're able to buy um, up an equivalent amount of shares to keep the same ownership stake in the company if they want. And they all came in at a pro rata plus, meaning that they put additional money in beyond that. And then despite the fact that the whole world was blowing up, uh, we uh, brought in an additional fund that a couple of the founding very early people at uh, Stripe came in and put in an additional uh, 2 million into that round. So um, I guess... <laughs> So the startup experience for me is people keep saying, oh, every sort of milestone you hit, it's like, oh, that's great. And it's like, yeah, it still doesn't feel like a real company. So uh, at some point here, it will feel real, hopefully. Um, and that's probably going to be the point at which it's profitable, which fingers crossed will be next year. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's simultaneously the hardest thing I've ever done and also the most fun and stimulating thing I've ever done. So still would do it again, but uh, maybe take a three or four year break after, after this one. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely take a, a different approach to this question. Um, really cool. Is hopefully uh, contrasting kind of like some of the like real, real business problems that we're facing with just kind of my pie in the sky uh, musings on, on life. Um, we'll, you know, click with some of you. Um, but like in, in my case, I think the 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 big challenges are um, more around like fitting your career into your life. Um, and so, um, you know, I've got I've got three kids, and um, and my wife also works at Amazon. She's an economist here, um, and we're in Seattle. Um, and so, like, you know, when when COVID hit and Things shut down and daycare is like you know one day they'd be open another day they'd, they'd be closed and um you know just all these random things you just have to start thinking about and, and like um how do i stay productive at work while also you know making sure you know there's there's gonna there was a two-week stretch or there's been like four two-week stretches where like daycares were closed down because of covid exposure and 
Um, so we're, we're, the five of us are kind of in the house. Uh, we're trying to do our work. The kids are running around. Um, and it's just like, how do you, how do you balance everything? Um, and like, I don't, I don't have the right answer. Um, other, other than to say like, um, it's just, you know, always, always in the case of business, at least communicate what's going on. Like tell the people you're working with what's going on. People are understanding of, of life and things that are, are getting in the way. And, um, you know, like I worked all day yesterday, um, so that, you know, tomorrow or Wednesday, like I can celebrate my wife's birthday more and like just kind of flexing around and like letting all my colleagues know that I'm doing that. Um, I think has been been helpful for me, but every every day kind of brings new challenges on the like the personal and family front, and 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 related to that also um, on just kind of the world, like in the the state of the world, right? Like people can get pretty down um, on, uh, with what's going on in the country and things like that, um, and so like making sure you don't get into a little hole, like where you're kind of insulated from everything, like. Try to pull up, think big picture, um, figure out how, what you can do to play your part in not only your work, but your family, your, you know, the local community and, and things like that. And um, don't, don't get like, yeah, bogged down in one spot. Just um, always, always see what, you know, be reactive to what's going on around you. Um, and I think that's something that I've learned more um, as I've gotten older. But definitely at Academy, I wasn't, I wasn't reading the New York Times or anything like that. I was, you know, watching, you know, watching ESPN or something like that. Um, but you know, all that, all that stuff that's going on around you is super important and, and voting and, and everything like that. Um, so yeah. Thank you. I think even for us as high school students, it's really important to find a balance in between everything we're doing. So that's really good advice. Um, so the next question is what constitutes success for you? What do you love most about what you do? I guess, uh, so I'll give the, um, uh, it's a little bit, uh, well, I guess it's a, it's a cliche answer, um, but I think, I think it applies um, in that, like, um, one, you know, once I've found uh, a job that is meaningful, like that I, that I get something out of other than just going to work and then coming home and like, not everybody's going to, going to find that quickly. Um, I hope that all of you are going to find that eventually. Um, like I said, it took me 12 years um, and three children <laughs> to, to like to go figure that out. Um, and but honestly, um, I still feel like my career is just starting. Um, so, you know, so where it may seem like a long time, like if you guys, I guess, double your age um, and that's where I'm at, like it probably seems like a long way away. Uh, but for me, it's it's just the start of things. Um, and so, um, you know, don't don't uh you know, just don't be afraid to try try different things um see what works see what doesn't um i i skipped over like one job that i had where i was there for nine months because it's so horrible um and like i just don't talk about it anymore so like that's that uh and like you know it, if you if you find me on linkedin you'll find that job but like it just wasn't great so you know i moved on to the next thing um so yeah so so i i'd say uh Success in, in work is, is that like not stopping until you figure out like where, where your, where your place is. Um, and then success in life is just um, making sure in my case, it's making sure that work doesn't get in the way of life. Um, it's making sure that uh, I am, I, I'm with my kids um, four mornings a week and every day for dinner. Um, you know, like it's, it's, um, it's that kind of thing. And, and finding the, it's carving out the right space. Um, for where you are personally in your life. When I came out of college and went into investment banking, uh, I wasn't I wasn't carving out you know seven dinners and four mornings a week for whatever I wanted to do. I was working all the time. It was like 100 hour weeks. Um, Aaron can can speak to that. And Matt, I, I'm, you probably have some of that going on right now. Um, but like you know, at that time in my life, that was okay. Um, that that was a time where I was invested in learning new skills for my career. Um, and just seeing where it took me. Um, but now, like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Like, it, if Jeff Bezos comes asking me a question, yeah, I might work uh, a late night for something. Um, but, you know, other than that, I'm not going to, uh, like, I'm not going to drop everything um, on every little problem that comes up at work that doesn't need to be, um, even though I'm now doing something that I'm really, really passionate about. 
I still have to maintain my balance. I think, uh, yeah, definitely. So I spent some time as a management consultant too, and uh, startup hours are actually less than management consulting hours for the most part, which is kind of surprising. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, for success for me, it's sort of like a Venn diagram of things that you get really fired up about and motivated by and things that will pay you. Um, so if you can find anything in the middle there that uh, gets you motivated to go in and do the work every day and you can make a living off of it. Uh, it's In my case, it's super nerdy that I get so fired up about uh, the sort of regulatory space, but like going right out of school into the government, seeing how so many of the ways that we do things are just completely broken internally. Like you have uh, approaches that were written on the assumption that, uh, I mean, before computers existed and we're still trying to kind of do the same thing today, like no one ever actually took a step back and said, why the heck is this still a thing? Uh, I can give a ton of examples about that, but I will not because it's excessively nerdy. Um, but anyway, the I guess that's that's it. Like, uh, if you can maneuver yourself into finding something that you're passionate about that and turn that into your job, that's amazing. But ex exactly like Kevin said, I think for the first, I viewed the first sort of ten years out of college as basically like every job that I wanted to go into is mainly. I was not looking for something to be the rest of my career is more like, how can this teach me something that will eventually get me to the point that I can kind of get into the ideal type of job for the long term. Uh, so uh, maybe work hard when you need to, so that when you're in your thirties and you've got a family and such, you can uh, be in a job that gives you a better balance and also gives you the intrinsic motivation to get up and do it every day. Yeah, and that's a great point to end on because I think, you know, how I would have, how I was approaching the question was to say success would be defined in terms of the personal freedom that, you, that, that you're enabled by doing what it is that you do. And, and, you know, you don't necessarily need to be under this illusion that you have to love every job that you'll ever have because it's not going to be the case. But what you, I think you will appreciate is what that job allows you to do outside of it. It does it give you the personal freedom does it, to, to explore outside interests and hobbies? Does it give you um, the respect for your, your personal time to spend with your family, to spend with your friends? And I think I spent um, so much of the first few years working, uh, having very little freedom for jobs that were deemed prestigious, but uh, weren't necessarily affording me um, the kind of uh, life that I, that I wanted. And I knew that eventually that was going to need to change because uh, from a from the perspective of wanting more of that freedom back in in my own hands and not my employers and just um, having and, and Matt had just alluded to this having a job that you thought of as being uh, more than just temporary more than just something that you were using to get to the next position to the next position and that's how I spent uh, much of that that the early time in my career and, and to echo what Kevin mentioned earlier just about um, not having control of your schedule in investment banking or even in, in management consulting it's very similar um, so. Those are the ways that you define success. And then also working for a company that you believe in, working in a, in a role that you believe in, that you're comfortable in, um, where you, you, you find that thing that sort of clicks for you. And I think that that's the way that you could define success within the role. But you also have to think of it. Um, I think that you, know, you can't be so narrow minded that we define it only in terms of what that career track is. And we have to think about um, what it gives you in other areas of your life as well. Yeah, and, and so we have a question from um, the audience and might be um, one of our last questions. Um, we have a student asking, do you have any advice for those of us who are still undecided about a major and a career? Yeah, so I, um, I'll, I'll take that one um, because, yeah, like, like I mentioned earlier, I, I was undecided uh, all the way up to, to everything. So like, you know, I didn't, I didn't like computer science, uh, you know, for the first bit of, of high school. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh, okay, well, this is kind of interesting. It wasn't like I then said, oh, I'm going to major in it. Um, and in fact, I, I think there was at one point, maybe in sophomore or junior year of college, I had enough credits toward like four or five different majors that like, if I wanted to go pick any of these paths, I could go make it happen um, you know, for the next two years. Um, and I landed on computer science. Um, and like, I, 
I, like, like I said, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, until probably three, you know, two, three years ago. Um, so if you're undecided, don't let that slow you down. Um, just go try things. Um, and if, and if, you know, you, you, you get to be, it's junior year of college or, or senior year of college and you have gotten into a major track and you're like, eh, I don't know, like this isn't for me. It's okay. Finish it out. Um, and then go try something else, you know, go, go shift gears. Um, I'm, you know, or, or some people that I'm close to here, um, the one woman, she was a accountant major in undergrad and now she's a doctor. So she just went the other way. Um, and like, I, I can give you countless examples of that. Um, my, my case, it was a little bit more straightforward, um, along the way, like it was all based on math, but like, um, yeah, it's amazing how many people just shift along the way and people, even to this day, like, uh, I know, I know a guy who's just finishing his, his med school because he spent his first, um, yeah, four years investment banking. And then he tried something else. And then he was like, oh, okay, no, I'm going to go to med school too. So like, it happens all the time. Um, just, just keep, keep trying to new, uh, explore new paths. Uh, yeah, just do not worry is, is my is my advice. It'll, it'll, it'll work. It'll work. Pretty much regardless of what major you pick, you can find a way to if you can present yourself well and ideally also write well, you can probably spin it into pretty much any job that you want. Mm -hmm. Just. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Thank you, guys. Uh, Ms. Conti, do we have time for one more or do we have to finish up now? I, I think that we probably should wrap up. Well, well thank you so much to all of our speakers as well as Sejal for facilitating our conversation yes. tonight. Thank you all for attending our first virtual career week panel. Um, and if you have remaining questions for our panelists, please email me or come see me tomorrow and I can help get you in touch with them as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, panelists and Sigil. <laughs>